Every once in a while I go against my better judgment. I know better than to do things that I do sometimes. And today's one of those days where I went against my better judgment. Pup, we're at a dealer auction. I bought a car for $2,200. I don't know the last time I bought a $2,200 car. I just couldn't resist. And I'm gonna show it to you right over here. It's not the Ford Edge, it's not the Volkswagen Golf, it's not the Santa Fe. Oh wait, what is that? A 4.2 liter V8 all-road wagon, one owner with 99,000 miles. That is my latest pickup at today's dealer auction. And in today's video, we're gonna go through this gem. 99,000 miles, one owner, all-road V8. This thing is, like, these don't even exist anymore. Let's see if I won or if I lost in today's pickup of the week. My name is Craig from Flying Wheels. Let's get going. Don't do it, Craig. Don't do it. You know you don't need an old Audi. I can't help it. Let's go check this car out. This is a 2004 Audi all-road with a 4.2 liter V8 Quattro all-wheel drive. These all-roads are amazing. Wide body, nice wheels, adjustable suspension, and this car has 99,000 miles, and it's a one owner. Check this out right here. Oh, look at how squeezed in that engine is. That's a 300 horsepower engine in kind of a fun family car, and it comes with two-tone leather. It has the window visors, the window shades, spare in the back. Seeing the radio though. AC's cold now, and the suspension holds there. Here's the problem. This is a car from my generation. This is like something I'd keep. I'd put a ski rack on the top of it, put my kids in the back, all the junk that we carry way in the wagon part. 2500, three grand maybe. I'll be into it for this car before I have to invest money. Chances are suspension doesn't hold there though. Chances are the timing chain guides are worn. Chances are the ball joints need to be replaced and it's missing a radio too. All that can be done. The problem is I bet the check engine lights on, which was normally for torque converters in the six cylinder, the twin turbo, bi-turbo, the V8, maybe not. So let's check. All right, no check engine light. But in a car at the auction that's sold by a, like not a new car store, another dealer is selling this for some reason, there's a good chance they could have cleared the check engine light and then brought it through the auction. That way the check engine light isn't on and then I drive home and the code comes on. Several long days later. This is a 2004 Audi Allroad. Allroad is like the A6, but it's their Allroad edition. It has the fender flares. It has adjustable suspension. 4.2 liter V8 pup in this wagon. Yeah. It's one owner, no accidents. It's unbelievable, this car. And we'll start right from here, going into this hatch. Like, it has the spare in it, the full-size spare. Cars don't do that anymore. Still has the hazard sign. It has the folding middle row. I wish it had the backwards third row like the old cars did. Going into the inside, look at the two-tone leather interior. Smells like an 04 Audi used to, just like I remember. Now, look at how clean this car is. These just don't exist anymore. They're not on the road. That's why I couldn't resist. Now, I was the high bidder. At fifteen hundred dollars, I went up to seventeen hundred. They wanted three thousand. I said, absolutely not. There's no way. I ended up paying for this car. Pop, what did I pay for this? You have the past, don't you? No. I think no. I paid twenty four hundred dollars with the fees. I'm gonna have to do a radio. Let's see if it starts. I looked at it before the auction, so I kind of gave it a drive. I gave it a look at. Are the books in there? And see if the glove box falls open when I open it. Wow, the door isn't broken. The books are in there. All the books. Cool. All right, no radio. Let's see if this falls off when I open it. Wow, those are always broken too. Oh man, just like I expected. Typical Audi. How's it going on? Well, we'll save that for later. And then typical Audi fashion, what doesn't make sense is when you pull the emergency brake up, it hits the center console, which pushes this up. We're missing the center console piece right here. It's clean and it doesn't sound right, well, think it. bad. 99,000 mile car for $2,400. Not to mention it's all wheel drive and a V8. Yeah. There's a following for these and there are people out there. I'm thinking this is a, like a bring a trailer or cars and bids car up and make it perfect. I know what everybody's gonna say. Oh, it's gonna need a timing chain, 99,000 miles. You're gonna have to do a timing chain. It's purring right here, purring, no issues, quiet. Coolant's where it's supposed to be. This car's awesome. All right, I'm gonna take you to pick up our other car. We bought two more cars today, and then uh, we'll get this home and get it cleaned up and up for sale. Hey, check that out, an 05 Astro van, 277,000 miles. They don't make them like that anymore. I think it's on an S10 platform. Hey, so I wanna give a special shout out to today's sponsor, which is my 70 My Omni dash cam. That's it right there, and you can see it actually has a digital display. Over a year ago, they sponsored a video for me, and I've had that camera in my truck ever since, and it's a product that I actually use and love. 
Now it actually has motion detection. So if you can see my son playing soccer right there, it's actually recording him based on his motion. It's the first ever 360 degree rotating dash cam. It also has collision detection. When the car encounters a collision, it will enter the emergency recording state. This emergency recorded video will be stored in a separate folder. It also has incredible night vision, which is far superior to your standard dash cam. It took me under 10 minutes to install. This isn't a product that I just say, hey, go out and try this. This is a product I've been using for well over a year. I want to get one for my wife's car too. If you're ever in an accident, you will be glad you had this in your car. They're currently running a Black Friday and Cyber Monday deal on Amazon. This is a product that I highly recommend. I use it myself. It would make a great gift for a loved one. There is a link in the description if you'd like to go check it out for yourself. So I've been getting more requests for cheap cars lately. Here's another I couldn't pass up. This is a 2005 Chevy Trailblazer EL. Extended length, third row seat, six cylinder. It's the, they're inline six cylinders. Those things are bulletproof. 159,000 miles. I didn't look at this. I bought this site on scene, but it's pretty clean. Good tires. Those tires are worth what I paid for this car. Fairly clean on the inside. Yeah. Started right up. Started Any engine, right third up. row seat. Look at that. Any engine lights or anything? No. No? She's no. quiet. Four wheel drive going into winter. Guess what I paid for this? $700 plus the fees. So like $850, $900 for this car. Watch this. Station wagon, right Pop? Ready? Not bad for a station wagon, huh? Let's hope it stops now. All right, lunch is over. Enjoy your Audi, your V8 Audi. I'll see you at the shop. Man of lots of words. And this is my third purchase, 2013 Escalade Platinum. What's cool about this is the saddle brown interior embossed Escalade. This has like five DVDs, two overhead in the seat headrests, and then that's a DVD as well. These are actually heated and cooled cup holders. This is the, like the ultimate. This is pretty amazing. I love these Escalades. The next day. All right, today's the day we're getting on the Audi. I bought this Thursday. I went to Las Vegas for SEMA, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. We are back here today getting at this Audi all road. And I'm just having second thoughts. Like I bought it for itself. I don't need it. And I bought it to sell, but it's too nice. Looking. I don't know what to do with it, but today we're gonna clean it. We're gonna bring it back to life, make it as perfect as we can. Then we're gonna photograph it. And I'm thinking this is like the perfect Cars and bids car or bring a trailer car. Let's see if the, oh, is the emergency kit in here. Please be in here. Ah, oh, they stole the emergency commit kit. The ski bag's still there, but that's what makes these cars cool is when you find the accessories. I'm gonna have to go to another Audi, grab the, the first aid kit because that makes it like more valuable to be in this car. Now the leather isn't perfect. It's showing its age all over the car. It's worn. We gotta get a, a aftermarket radio off, so I'll order that. Hey, you found this. Where was this? That was uh, in there when I got in it. Dave must have found it. Great, great, great. I might get buttons to replace these. Usually you can get decals to replace these. I'm thinking we could make this car near perfect and put it on like bring a trailer. So for today, Jim, if you don't mind, yep. blow everything out in between the seats, blow everything off the carpets, uh, do a good, good leather condition. Don't do any like degreasers because you can already see the tannins are pulling out of these leathers. Yep. A good leather condition should take care of it. It looks like, just, did you already power wash the floor mats? No, they were like that. Somebody must have because you can see those lines. That's from a power washer. I'd almost say turn the fan on the power washer wide and then power wash them again. Somebody went too sharp with the jet. So you can power wash them again. And then I'll use a, uh, I'm having word finding problems at my shampoo, and I'll just extract the water out of them or you can extract the water out of them. Going to the back. Oh my goodness, that stays up. I would put the seats down, blow all this stuff out with our air gun. We have a high powered air gun that does a majority of the work for us. So we don't have to get on our hands and knees and just vacuum everything. Oh, so the bags, like I think that's the pump for the air ride, right? But we don't have air ride, it's been converted. So this went on the lift Thursday right away and it's already been converted to suspension. What is that? Portable digital media player, a PDMP. Never even seen such a thing. What is this? Is this an original MP3 player? I do not know. I think it is, that is weird. I would be, or you guys can tell me what it is. I've never seen anything like that. Fat, fat missions. Fat noise, fat noise. Yeah, we don't need that there. But look, is that an amplifier too? Somebody did some work to this, which is actually kind of a bummer because I was thinking I could just buy a radio and it would be plug and play. But if somebody's wired things to amplifiers, it's not gonna be as simple. Yeah, this should be a fairly quick turnaround though. I will work on getting the radio. I'll work on getting the buttons. If you could do everything on the inside, the headliner deserves a good scrub. So the headliner, all these stains. Yep. I have a steam cleaner that would probably work best. We just bought it. So if you just put water in the steam cleaner, you can kind of spray it on and scrub it. See how it's already pulling? I saw so that. So the glue's dried up and that's why this is coming off. I don't want it to tear. If this is fragile, I don't want it to wear. So if you start seeing that it's pulling apart or stuff, stop. 
but I would love to see all these things out. So steam cleaner and see if you need to scrub with like a non-abrasive brush maybe. Okay. Uh, an extractor sometimes. So go back between the extractor, the shampooer, and a steam cleaner and see which one works best. We'll do the inside first and then you and I will go over the outside. Sounds good. Fair enough, thank you. This is honestly one of my most favorite parts of doing auto detailing is the paint correction. So 04 Audi All Road, like it's an all right car and it's a one owner and it's been really well cared for. But if you look at it, come in here you can see like i'm not gonna get that out that's that's deep past the clear coat past the paint but these i might be able to get some of these out and if you come around there are scratches here there are some scratches here and here a lot of these we can get out see the deep ones all in here a lot of that can come out with just a paint correction and i think we can do it in two stages sometimes you get a wet sand and the deep ones wet sand but not too deep because you don't want to ruin the clear coat this i think just a rubbing compound and then a polish if you saw the tahoe video it would be the same thing that we did at the Tahoe and we're gonna try it. So I'm gonna do one section and then this will be the compare section for you. So we're gonna go here. I love the tape line, it just makes it a little bit more fun because I like before and after. Now before I get into this, let me see that camera real quick. We're gonna go down this car so we can see before and afters. You can kind of see like in the light, all those real light swirl marks, yeah. those should come out. The chrome is dull. Okay. This might come back too. I mean, it's, it could be the way the light is shining because it doesn't look terrible here, but I think that might shine as well. Going over the side, we have some light scratches. A lot of this will and a lot of this won't come out. This is gonna have to be painted. That's not gonna come yeah. out, okay? Going to this side, all right, so if you look at the plastics, these plastics, if you get wax on them, they're gonna turn white and make a mess, okay. all right? So you really wanna try your hardest to not get compounds all over any black trims on the car. I had my son polish this thing and he got wax everywhere. And it's <laughs> so much work to remove it. Again, a lot of these should come out. This is paint work. We'll do some paint work as well here and here. But I think this stuff will come out right here and a lot of these. And like, I'm really thinking this car is gonna, I don't know about that one, but I'm really thinking this car is gonna come out amazing when we're finished. This, if you watch my Tahoe video, yep. I got that up with a razor blade, yep. it really wasn't so. tough. So we're gonna do that first and then I'm gonna try this section. So we're gonna grab a compound, compound cuts. So if you look here, like extra heavy cut. Meguiar's, this is not a Meguiar's sponsor video, reach out to me Meguiar's because I give you too many shout outs. Now, if you go here, polish, finishing polish, where cut is really, really low. So this deep glossy finish, this fast cutting compound. All right, so quick removal of finer sanding marks, and then this will remove what this does. So first we're gonna do this with a heavier pad. Let's see, where is my polisher and my buffer? All right, so we're just gonna do it with this one right here. This is a pretty heavy cutting pad. Uh, it's about time for a new one, but I'm just gonna go with it. We're gonna use this one. One of my favorite things, if I just put this in here, as soon as I pull away, it's gonna pull away, right? You cross it like an X, you go under. Voila, Papa Al Hack taught me that. All right, let's do the, poly, uh, the compound. Shake it up a bit. Now, if you saw the Tahoe video, again, if you put compound, wax, whatever on the car, it's gonna go everywhere. It's gonna shoot all over your pants. It's gonna shoot all over your jacket. Probably still gonna happen a little bit, but let's try to eliminate as much as we can. If I just do this, it's gonna make a mess. So I'm gonna put it on, uh, even that's way too much. I don't need that much. I'm gonna take the compound. I would usually dab it in multiple spots instead of one big giant glob, but I messed up. So leave me alone, here. I'm gonna dab it on. I'm gonna roll it around the pad. So this isn't just getting it on the car. It's actually going on the whole pad itself. And now even still, if I turn it on right now, you'll see there's still a lot of wax. That's just gonna spin off and hit me. So I'm gonna try to get it in pretty consistently all over the car. And you can even start at a low speed. So most of your polishers and buffers have speeds. So if we start fairly low, I can get it on. If I start at top speed, it's just gonna shoot it and fling it everywhere. Get it consistently all over the car. And then you can go back and forth. And go down the line. All right, now the fun part. Let's crank it up. I'm gonna go with the angle. Still some scratches here, so I'm gonna go a little, spend a little bit more time on them right here. Gotta angle the polisher on it. I don't think I'm gonna get rid of them. Then we're gonna grab a fairly clean towel and wipe it off. All right, ready? Now the compound did most of the work for me. I didn't really use my muscles. I didn't use my arms. And uh, I let the polisher do the work. So the compound's gonna cut, the polisher's gonna do the work. If you look closely, there's still some scratches and swirl marks. Those are your light, fine swirl, mark, swirl marks from your compound. So we're gonna do it with a polisher now. Change to a polisher, we change to a polishing pad. Again, I'm just gonna do a couple 
light dabs across it. That should be plenty, more than enough I need for that section. This should cover, yeah, about, about this or the quarter of a car. And if I do it in circles, again, it'll get it all over the pad instead of just in certain sections of the pad. Yeah, see, that's more than I even need. See how far it goes? The polish is a lot lighter, so it, it does go farther than the compound will. Now, I'm not pushing down, but I am applying a little bit more pressure than the cutting pad. The cutting pad, the compound will do all the work originally. This, I'm actually gonna give it just a little bit of pressure on the soft foam, and I go, uh, with the angles up and down, and then side to side. Now, because I used so much polish, it's gonna actually take more for me to wipe it off, so this would have been like less is more type of thing. If you look right here, can I see that real quick? If you look right there, at that reflection, that's pretty decent for what I just did. So I'm just gonna wipe it all off, and then we get to see if there's actually a difference. I would say so. I can kind of see the line. A lot of these scratches and swore marks are gone. Yeah, when I look at angles. Yeah, when you get up close to it. Yeah, I can see it. All right, now I spent a lot of time in one section. I don't think it's that necessary. I think you can do them in like quadrants. So do the hood, one section, two section, three section, four. Okay. Compound the whole car first, wipe it all off, mm -hmm. then polish the car. There's no sense in doing one quadrant compound, then polish, all right? Do it all one step and then do it all two step. Good? Sounds good. Cool. Are you unpolished? So you compounded and now you're unpolished? All right, this is the first time for everything. And I, I don't know if I'm embarrassed or flattered, <laughs> but flattered. a gentleman that had seen this car on probably Instagram, I think it was where it really went wild, but it's been all over the place. This is a Buick Park Avenue. The video I made went wildly viral, 61,000 mile car, and I showed you all the benefits of like, the cars aren't made like they used to be made. As cool as this one is, this is actually the car he showed up in, his winter car, summer car. Can I open it again to just show the interior? I wanna show you the interior of this Porsche. So 85 and a half, the dash changed, right? It was like kind of boxy in 84, 85, 85 and a half, the interior of the 944 actually changed and the dash is a little bit just nicer looking and a little more modern, I guess I can kind of say, but my favorite part is the interior. So look at the seat coloring and the combination. Now you can kind of see how it dries and stretches, which I thought was interesting. This is original. So if that's all that's happened, that's pretty neat. And then it's darker in the rear than it is in the front because of the sun fade. Really, really neat car. And I think, I know you guys are gonna correct me if I'm wrong. I think these have a perfect 50 50 weight distribution and they make a great autocross car. It's cool to see one like this, not rusty. Not rusty and not all clapped out. You just have like a nice clean 944. All right, I had talked about being slightly embarrassed but also flattered. Yeah. <laughs> there we go, that works better. I think this is my first autograph, so here we go. Ready? Now you go Lauren, you do the honors? Oh man. Do you have a big signature? All right. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. All right. That's actually pretty cool. And Lauren, you have a great signature. Thank you so much. Thank that you for that. Cool. That is very cool. And about as cool as the car is, I just want to go through one more time how comfortable. Six passenger with comfort, armrests for the rear, gigantic trunk, and you can also open it to put, like I had said before, six packs of soda back there. All right, Dan, enjoy your car. Thank you so much. Know, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. So if you've been following me for a while, you know that I said I'm done buying Audis. The problem is I love Audi. I love, hate Audis. I had them in high school. Actually, my friend had one in high school that we loved. I've so told the story a thousand times. I'm just hooked on Audis, even though I despise them. I have a 2022 Audi e-tron GT that's plummeting in value, but still one of my most favorite cars. This thing, I already know every person that's gonna message me or if I dare put it in an Audi forum, oh, the timing chain tensioners and cam tensioners, they're gonna fail on you. Stay away. Like, I know. And honestly, I'm surprised at how negative the Audi forum and Facebook groups are because I thought you get like a higher standard with Audi. You don't. Might as well be a damn Honda Civic group or a freaking Dodge Challenger group because every time I post a car, doesn't matter if it's a $100,000 car or a $4,500 car, you get every person that knows everything about Audi commenting on what they want, like what they prefer. Oh, that's a nice car, but I prefer my car because well, like I'm listing it for sale. Not, I, I don't want to chat about your car over mine. Just if you're interested in message, that's what's awful about like 
really all forums, not just Audi forums. I was surprised that Audi forums are the same way though. I just would have expected different. Now with that in mind, like I had said, I, I, I despise Audis and I try not to buy them, but every once in a while, like it, a, a long enough period goes by where I haven't owned one for a while and then one runs to the auction and I know I should stay away from it and I don't. And that is that one right there. Now, before I even dive into it, out of all the cars on this parking lot right now, currently, what would you say would be your most hated vehicle? or looking least forward to working on? The yeah, Audi. All right, I did not preface him on that. Thank you. On a whim, I bought this 2014 Audi A7 S line, supercharged V6. These are actually great engines. I'd prefer not see this APR intake. I'd rather just be stock. And then after I bought it, I noticed the last inspection was May, 2021. That's when it expired. So the most recent inspection was almost four years ago, three and a half years ago, it would have been May, 2020. It was a freaking repossession. I knew I shouldn't have bought it, but they're just such beautiful, beautiful cars. Like look at that interior and it only has 99,000 miles. So you'll see the battery is in the trunk. Now the issue is it's leaking coolant and like I smell fuel and the battery is stone dead. Now it was a repossession, so it could have been sitting for a long time. It looks so good in the light right now too. The position of the sun, sun setting and the blue looks so good right now. So I keep all my custom spray paint cans like I can get the color match off of the uh, paint coat and they'll send me custom spray cans. Sometimes I can get them like right from a factory match that I can get from like AutoZone or Walmart or whatever. I actually have the blue for the Audi. I can spray a couple areas, but I want to touch up a couple areas. I don't want to actually like, I don't want to fan paint on certain areas of that car. It's too nice. So I keep paint under here. Like I'll have storage and I bet there's a blue. If you go under here, you can find the blue for that car. And then I keep little paintbrush that so can just touch up like that might be the blue right there. It's for a Ford, but I bet it's really close. Uh, so check this out and see. And then we have paintbrushes that you can just touch things up when you're finished. Okay. Be careful when you shake a paint can that the, the lid is on all the way. Oh, that feels hard. Darn it. That feels like there's nothing up. The lid wasn't on tight. It might break. It's all jelly. Darn it. Well, look at that blue pearl. That might actually work. So if you take a brush, I have little paint brushes here, and you can hit those areas with this brush, and uh, the bigger areas will spray. And I think that will work out really well. Oh, that's dark. That car is way darker than this blue is. Look at it. It's going to be way off, I think. Yeah, that's not going to work. If I did this in black with a black base coat or put black in here, it might look like I have to make our own custom color. Look at how it dries versus how it goes on. All right, I'll figure it out on my end. I'm actually going to make my own custom color. So I'm going to pour some blue in this old paint mixing cup, and I don't need a lot. That's more than I need, way more than I need. Then I'm gonna take some black that I just have lying around and I'm gonna make way too much paint for a touch-up area. Give just a dabble of black, probably too much like I said. Oh, uh, let's give it a little stir. Guess what? I used too much black and it came out really fast. Let's go try it though. And there's even some metallic in this, so it's looking pretty close. Oh my, first try. Now look at it before, right? This is the original color. This is my custom color. Sometimes I get it right. Now, had I known I was gonna match this so well, I could have sanded that down and made it way nicer. And now I'm regretting not doing it the right way. But the people that know me from YouTube know I'm the biggest hack on YouTube. I was trying to do something quick, could have done it the right way and it would have looked better. But when this dries, I can actually wet sand this and polish it out, but I should have feathered the edges. Let's see if there are any more areas. I don't really see any. I'll let you do some like along door edges like this. Yep. You can just touch that up later as like a final detail. Sometimes it's on mirrors. Sometimes it's around the doors. Uh, this one right here, right? Eh? Right here. That's 
pretty good. I'll leave this out for you. Sounds good. And you can do some areas uh, that you see. Like I missed a couple little small spots. Yeah. I'll let you walk around and touch it up, okay? Sounds good. Uh, I should have asked to make sure you were done polishing, right? Just the front bumper I'm doing. And then the roof, that's all it. All right, great. So I'll leave this right over there for you. Audi, so I noticed that the adjustable suspension doesn't work, obviously, because they changed it out. That would make sense as to why. But on a different note, like look at how many suspension components there are in an Audi. Crazy. Like instead of just an upper and lower control arm, you have all of this going on. Wild. Back in 2004, what is this right here? What's this wiring for? It looks like that's not grounded. What is that? Yeah, but it ends right there. All right, so we are working. You know what? I'm going to show the video of the van just so we know it's on the van. So I don't want it to be a contest for a van. No. But would they be more excited if we picked them like they now because if we're giving them a van we can't just be so like hey surprise everybody went behind your back and we're giving you a van yeah because oh also you got to be on video yeah. um what if we just was we're like as transparent as can be we're giving away a handicapped van to a family in need uh that deserves it please i don't want to say tell us why but please apply and you'll have to have like a questionnaire and then when we pick them and, and we can be transparent and say it's for YouTube and thanks special thanks to some donors yeah you will be on camera yeah that way they know right up front okay it's for camera it's we may get it we may not get it and then yeah. when somebody does get it then we'll they know to, they want we would have to put a deadline on it like Oh, like three weeks. I know, like. I was gonna say, like the first ten people to apply it's out of that. Oh, okay, I like that. Like that, yeah. So it's not open to ten, fifteen people to email, read through what they wrote, and go based on. So I don't know how to base. But on. now are you the person vetting somebody? Like they tell us a story. Yeah. And we're like, oh yeah, let's go with them. I just don't know how to pick one. Which <laughs> I don't know. All it's right. Tough. So we do have to have people apply. I think we, yeah, right. unfortunately. So we're gonna reach out to the school, tell them what we're doing in a paragraph, which is perfect, yeah, transparent, right what we're doing. and then they apply to us, and we... They're, yeah, they're basically gonna give what I write, like a paragraph. To the families. To families that would qualify, like, not, I don't wanna say qualify. Yeah, qualify, I think that's right though, the idea is Qualify right for use of this van, yeah. not just a family that doesn't have a car, but someone that could use a handicap ramp. So they would let's, pass it out to those family, yeah. families, and then they reach out First to us. 10. First 10, shut it off at 10, and then we can sit down and decide together. Okay, let's do that. that yeah. That's probably the best way. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we can vet them through the church. I keep saying that because I only know like two ways to find the school or the church. So yeah. maybe we can vet it just a little bit. The school and church? The school, yeah. I don't know. We'll, we'll get to that road when we cross it. Okay, thank you. Who would have thought this would be so difficult? All right, it's getting dark, and I want to show you something. I didn't want this paint to run, and I didn't want it to harden, so I gave it just a few minutes. And now what happens is all this paint kind of filled in the layer. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to go right over the top and kind of smooth out the paint, and then I'm going to smooth out the paint here, and I'm also going to smooth out the paint right there, and it's going to kind of take off the level of paint that we applied. Now, I need to do multiple coats, but I'm going to keep doing this, let it dry, and then I'm just going to level off the paint. And then we can lightly wet sand it tomorrow when it's hardened, and then we can polish it out. All right, the Audi is near finished. Uh, there's a couple spots he touched up. We're waiting for the paint to dry down here so we can wet. So the Audi is near complete on the exterior. We're waiting for paint to dry so we can wet sand it. We'll polish it. I'm gonna touch up down here. That is paint protection film that cracks with time. And then the other thing I wanna do, we're gonna bring like a trim black to the bumper. And right here, oh, opposite, I'm sorry. I wanted you to tape the tail light oh, I got you, I got you. and leave the bumper and uh, I'm just going to spray a light coat dusting on All the that, scratches yeah. yep, right I there. It. I should have been more clear when I was saying it. Uh, a lot of this chrome or polished trim came back and the paint looks great for original paint. Also uh, just a compound and polish on the headlights really brought these back to life. I thought we were going to have to wet sand them. We didn't. They look good. And he did the roof as well. All right, I talked about yesterday, I have like so many color match paint cans. If I go right up to the paint, this is never gonna match. I mean, it kind of looks close, but it's never gonna match. If I, I would never spray paint anything from like here up, because you will absolutely notice it. Anything really low down below, like lower bumpers, corners of bumpers, you can fan stuff on and no one will ever notice. So if you just watch this real quick, I'm gonna just make it disappear. Haters are gonna hate that I'm doing this on the video, but it just disappeared. Now I'm gonna pull the tape off, and it'll be like nothing happened. Now, I am self-proclaimed 
YouTube hack, I should have taped more. Like if you look here, I do things to show people what not to do. I got like a little bit of paint spatter right there. Had I taped it better, I wouldn't have got any paint spatter and I won't have to clean that up. Now I just have to take a little bit of reducer to get my fan when I fanned it out. I gotta get that off now. So do things the right way, not the way I do them. But scuffs are gone. Let's see how the paint protection film, I'm not even gonna attempt to scratch this paint protection film off because it's just going to come off in like pieces. But I think I can get the white cracks gone. Yeah, there we go. That's a decent blend. And we'll probably have to do the other side too. Put your head. Yeah, this one's not nearly as bad. Use car dealer's best tool. That's it, done. A dusting, a feathering. I'm on eBay right now and I'm just buying some accessories. So I have an AC dash button repair kit that's $11, a wiring harness for a stereo, and then a doubled in dash kit. Total's $50. And I have a doubled in radio right here that we had in stock. So I'm gonna order these things and in a couple days they should show up and we can install a radio and put the button decals on so it will look heck of a lot cleaner. So I've been trying out some new products that I'm gonna like sample and then make flying wheels products. I haven't really come up with a name yet. Maybe it's just gonna be flying wheels. Now that you compounded it, you polished it, but then some of the touch-up spots I had you remove with reducer. Yep. So all the polish that you use is now gone in spots. So one of the products is a quick detailer and it's called Surge Quick Detailer. So we're just gonna spray it on in certain areas. You can spray it like this and then wipe it off with a clean rag. I'm gonna go in the same motion and I'll go in circles. And it'll put another kind of light coat. I'm gonna let it dry and then I'll wipe it off again with a different side of the rag. Now I can do it in circles since I've wiped most of it off. And you can see how it's yeah. leaving a nice gloss. This stuff isn't for sale yet. I'm still trying like trying different uh, nice chemicals. Thing. Yeah, it leaves like a perfect That's finish perfect. on what was already pretty nice. So another thing that I have too is a trim. I don't like trim black because when it gets wet, like when it rains, all the trim just, it just runs. It's all silicone based and it just runs off. Everything you sprayed and then your body is, I mean your, yeah, the body of your car is like, I don't cover it in silicone. I don't like that. So this stuff is called Alpha Trim Gel. So I'm gonna use this as soon as I can get this cap out. I'm gonna just put a little bit on a cloth. Okay, that's probably way too much. Yeah, it was hard to get in there with the polisher. Yeah, no, you can't do that. So like, yeah. that's how nice that came out. And then back here and check this out. Now you saw how little bit I used. Thank you very much. You saw how little I put on this? Yeah. All right, watch this. So it's just gonna make like a consistent, consistent shine on everything and kind of bring back everything. If I use too much, like I said, that product is like gonna run off mm -hmm. in the rain and it doesn't look good. Okay. But if you use a, a light amount on all the trim, it comes right back to life and it looks amazing. Okay. So it's worth doing like very last steps. Also, look at how nice this trim, this uh, spare tire cover came out. Did you use like a, a shining product on it? Tire shining. Tire yeah. shining, it looks incredible. <laughs> yeah, great job. <laughs> so those are probably your last steps. And then uh, you already cleaned the inside out, right? Conditioned the leather and we shampooed the carpets, put some nice lines in them. Yeah, it looks like you did the dash yep. already. We found our center console. Let's see how this comes out with it. I think that's actually dirty, so we can clean that up. Car looks and smells amazing. I think all this is dirt. So we're just gonna use like a heavy degreaser. Be careful with degreaser on leather, but this is hard plastic. I think a lot of that'll come out. All right, I notice right away, I noticed this came out amazing. This you did. Yes. That looks amazing. And then you must have done here yep. also and here. here. There were a lot of smudge marks around here. Yeah. Just got it off. And this. Yep. This product is great. Did you do it on this? Yep. That bumper, it is what it is. You know, it's an old bumper. That looks awesome. And then all these trim pieces look incredible. And then you did use this. Looks so good. Yep. All and then you use the spray wax to just do a final cleanup. Yep. Wow. And uh, then the inside, the wheels already great. came out, look great. It's a great product. Those are great, yeah. Interior looks amazing. Wow. So all we have left, I order the buttons and a radio, and I wish I had a toolkit for it. It's just the, ex like the, these come with a toolkit that go in that center console. Okay. This doesn't have it. I love the wide body on this car. All right, so the toolkit, wherever that is, I think it's worth just spray painting like a satin black. Yeah. Just to make it look good again, and then we should be pretty much finished. Yeah, just uh, wipe it down with some degreaser well, good. and then spray it satin black. Same with the jack stand. Tape off this stuff okay. here, and then kind of lightly sand it. Wipe it down, 
spray it satin black on top of some cardboard. Sounds okay. Good. It's like these little detail things will make a big difference yeah. on a car like this. If I was looking at this car, found the toolkit, found the first aid kit, I'd be so amazed. I'd buy it in a heartbeat. I think that's what's going to sell it is like little things like that. Sounds great. So I came by my overflow shop today to just kind of clean up some stuff before winter. I forgot. I have an Audi Allroad. I bought that over a year ago. This junker right here. I never get to do that. You can take parts out of this and what I, and we got lucky because right in here was the first aid kit and the owner's manual was in here as well. And even better, we have the factory radio right there and I actually have the tool kit with me to remove it. So this is really, really cool. I have a parts car that I completely forgot about to make my Audi all road even better. One day later. All right, so here is our Audi all road and she looks like an absolute cream puff, but said it, it's all about the details, right? Check out what Devin did. Texture coated the tool kit, spare tire kit. What is this? Uh, I think that's the, the tool for the, kit. Um, for the lug nuts. Nice. So that looks beautiful. And that was like all that was horrible. kind of rusty yeah. looking from some moisture. And the jack, you taped the jack taped all and that then up. textured Sanded it. Down a little bit, tape that, tape this. It looks amazing. I almost don't want to put it away. Like I feel like it should sit out so people can look at it and appreciate it. You did an excellent, excellent Thank job. All the door it. jams are decent. Um, like I would normally take a rag to these things, yeah, but they no, look. This good. one looks pretty good still. It's all about the details. Let's put this up. Close that. Oh man. Audis. Looks so good. We'll put the ski bag away and I really got to find, I'll figure that out later. I got to find a tool kit for it. I mean, if I have to find a first aid kit for it. You did a great, great job. Thank you. All right. Our all road is complete. And I got to tell you, she's running like a dream. Like hers, like a kitten. I haven't driven an Audi all-road this nice since 2004. And it's fast and it's fun, but I say that like loosely. 4.2 liter V8, I think it is 250 horsepower. Like it's, I'm spoiled. It's it's fast and it's fun. And it's a wagon with a V8, which is just unbelievable. If it was a six speed, 100% I would keep it, which actually wasn't an option. So the only six speeds came in either the S6 like version or the bi turbo. So this wasn't available as as an option in the V8 in the six speed. I was at the Audi dealer with my e-tron this week. The guy was amazed at this car and told me all about it. His brother loves these things. Apparently they have transmission issues. This one, luckily not so much. Now what's fun about this car is like, this is like your paddle shifter although it doesn't have paddle shifters, before paddle shifters. So you put it into Tiptronic and this is what made Audi like famous. So shift up, shift down, all right here. And it made for a pretty good time in the A4 and the A6. And I'm telling you the all road as well. Now these do have adjustable suspension, which is really fun in this car. And you'd put it right here and it would raise or lower based on your selection. This car has been converted to regular, to your standard strut spring suspension. So I guess that makes sense. No one's paying two grand on a car this age. It sounds so good. I wish it had an exhaust. No one's paying two to $2,500 on a suspension system on a car this age, unless they are really picky. All right, so I was gonna keep this thing. I don't need it. I'm gonna list it for sale right now. You can see how I parked my car like at an angle with the sun facing on us. We're gonna scrap, I'm gonna take a couple photos with the sun facing us. Then I'm gonna turn the car around, have it facing the opposite direction and I'm gonna get the sun facing us on all four points for photographs. And here she is, our finished product. A night and shimmering armor. Wait, is that how that goes? If anybody gets that quote from that, from that, what movie that's from, my mind will be blown. Night and shimmering armor. All right, Audi All Road. Here is the finished product, paint corrected. I love the fender flares. I love the wheels. I love the originality of the car. Enough that, like, if I had a collection of cars, I don't need an Audi All Road wagon. I, I don't, whatever. I, I can move on with this one. Although it's really cool. It was fun to have it for two weeks. Now I'm gonna list it up for sale. I'm thinking maybe $69.95. We don't have a ton of money into it. Uh, like radio and some miscellaneous parts and oil change and some time, manual labor. So we should make, I don't know, three, maybe about $3,000 on a really cool car. I had fun with it, reminisced a little bit, made some videos with it. That was fun. Do you guys enjoy these videos? If you do, tell me down below, should I continue with these like car flip, like buy them, fix them, clean them, sell them videos? Is that what you like? Do you like my rants where I talk about the industry? Do you like my boat videos, my house videos? What kind of stuff do you guys like? Tell me in the comments below and just a thumbs up. Doesn't cost you anything, but it's very helpful to me. So if you could hit the thumbs up button, the bell will give you notifications and subscribe. I'll see you all later. Thanks for watching. Adios, I'm gonna go enjoy this all road now.